we're going to finish this chapter up with a brief discussion of reactions and specifically an electrophilic addition reaction to the alkenes. And this is something that we're really going to delve into much more deeply in the next chapter. So this is just an introduction to see where we're going to be going. So first, I want you to consider a reaction. And here we have an alkene. We're reacting that with HBr, and we see that the HBr adds to this alkene, and it converts it from an alkene to an alkane. The hydrogen added to one carbon of the alkene, the Br added to the other carbon of the alkene. Now don't forget that this alkene did have a couple of hydrogen already on it, and those are still there. They don't disappear. But we really want to be able to understand this, and we do that by looking at the mechanism. And when I say mechanism, I mean we're looking at all of the steps that take the starting materials to the product. We're going to look at all the intermediates along the reaction pathway, and we're going to draw in curved arrows to show electron flow. So as we work through these mechanisms, we're going to be assigning those patterns of electron flow that we learned about previously. So here we have our two reactants, and the double bond is going to act as our nucleophile. The acid is going to act as our electrophile. Now when an acid is an electrophile, we do call this a proton transfer. But as we've learned previously, put your pencil down on the electrons of the nucleophile. In this case, that's a double bond. Draw a curved arrow to the electrophilic atom, which is the hydrogen. And then this proton transfer is accompanied by loss of that Br as a leaving group. So now what we're going to do is draw our main carbon skeleton, the four carbons here. But these two electrons in the pi bond here, those form the new bond to the hydrogen, because that's what we're showing with this first arrow. And right now we can put this hydrogen on either of the alkene carbons. So I'm just going to put it on the left. And there's the hydrogen. So it was the pi electrons that became this sigma bond to the hydrogen. Now what happened though is we took these pi electrons away from this carbon and left a void there. So we get a positive charge which we know is a carbocation. The other product is the Br minus which was the leaving group. And let's draw in all of the lone pairs on that bromide because we'll use them in the next step. From here, now the bromide is our nucleophile. The carbocation is our electrophile. So we can do another reaction step. And this you should know as a nucleophilic attack. And I'll put my pencil down on the lone pair of the bromide. It doesn't matter which one. Draw a curved arrow to the electrophilic carbon, which is the carbocation carbon. That's showing a bond between the bromide and the carbon. So here I have my bond to the hydrogen, which was there from the first step. Now I also have a bond to the bromide. And that's our product. In this particular case, both carbons of the double bond were equivalent, so it really didn't matter which one I put the hydrogen on and which one I put the bromine on. But we'll see that that's not always going to be the case. 
Now I want you to consider an experimental result here where we take an alkene starting material and you'll notice that now we don't have a symmetrical alkene. The two carbons of the alkene are different. One has a couple of hydrogen on it, one has a couple of methyl groups on it. But like before, we're reacting the alkene with HBr and we have a couple of options. We can end up putting the hydrogen on the rightmost carbon and the Br on the left carbon that was part of the double bond, or we can do the opposite and put the hydrogen on the left carbon and the Br on the right carbon. Again, we're just focused on the two carbons that were part of the double bond in the starting material. When this reaction is performed in the lab, it's found that the first product, the one on the left, is the only product. The second product, the one on the right, is not formed. We want to figure out why this is. The chemist to study this very thoroughly was known as Markovnikov. And he came up with what's now known as Markovnikov's rule, which simply states the hydrogen goes to the side where there's more hydrogen. The halogen goes to the other side, the more substituted carbon. So if you look at the starting material that we started with and compare the two carbons of the double bond, the carbon on the left has zero hydrogen attached. The carbon on the right has two hydrogen. This carbon on the left is the more substituted carbon of the double bond. And based on Markovnikov's rule, the hydrogen goes to the side where there's more hydrogen, and that's what we see in the product. The halogen, the Br, goes to the more substituted carbon. So Markovnikov's rule is a good way to memorize what products you're going to get, but it still doesn't really get to the heart of explaining why we get this particular outcome in the reaction. Anytime there's a why, a good place to start is in looking at the mechanism. I've drawn the starting material. This time I drew it without all of the carbons and hydrogens in place. And HBr is the re reactant. And I've drawn it twice. And the reason for that is so we can compare both possible pathways. As far as our electron pushing goes, if you put your pencil down on the double bond, you draw an arrow to the proton, and you lose the Br leaving group. That's going to be the same in both cases. On the top example, I'm going to draw the intermediate, and I'm going to put hydrogen on the right, which means the carbocation ends up on the left carbon that was part of the double bond. If you do the opposite, we'll draw this again. Now I'll put the hydrogen on this left carbon, and we get the carbocation on the right. Well now, compare both of these intermediates. You already know a good bit about carbocation stability. Here we have a tertiary cation, here we have a primary cation. Between those, the tertiary is more stable. A more stable intermediate means a lower energy or favored reaction pathway. So that means this is the preferred intermediate. This one's higher in energy, so it's not going to form. From there, we can finish up the mechanism. We have the bromide that was produced in that first step. That will come in and attack the tertiary carbocation. The 
H and the BR. Just a couple of side notes. One, it really doesn't matter exactly where you draw the bromine as long as it's attached to this carbon. Here I drew it between the two methyl groups. Up here I drew it uh, kind of toward the top. As long as it's on the carbon, you're fine. The second thing is I did explicitly draw in the hydrogen so we could see where it was added. But as you know, you can leave the hydrogens implied, so you don't have to draw that hydrogen in. So in summary, carbocation stability explains Markovnikov's rule and explains the product outcome in this electrophilic addition.